Good morning, everyone. I am standing here in front of my excuse for not putting out a garden video. Now, I did try to put out a garden video a couple of times, I think twice. But the problem is I would go up to the garden and I would show you all around and talk about some things. And then I would do the project for the day. One of those was the day that I clipped the wings on the turkeys. Well, then when I went to edit the video, it ended up too long to add in any part of the garden. So that's why I haven't given you guys a garden tour yet. And this here is what we're calling the quail house. It was the temporary building that we put up for our outdoor shower. I'm sorry, the gnats out here are horrific. But this is where we had our outdoor shower. We have our washing machine. We decided to turn it into the quail house. So we purchased four pieces of metal for the roof. We had just a little bit of siding that we put on right here on this corner. The rest of it is just plastic roofing that we had laying around, but it will protect them from any wind and rain until we can cut more siding. As we cut more siding, we'll add it on there and get it all done. Now this building is going to get a doorway in the front before winter. Not too worried about it right now. It's 95 to 97 degrees out here, so I don't want the birds getting too hot. We brought the brooder out. So the chicks are in there, the baby, the ones that aren't ready to go out yet. The pea fowl are in there and we brought the quail cage out. So that's my excuse for why I didn't put an, out another video this week or why I haven't got a garden video out because we were busy with that for a couple of days. But today, okay, we are going to do this garden because we've been harvesting a lot of it and bright light we've been harvesting a lot of the garden and i wanted to show you before we actually harvest all of it and then there's nothing left to show we're going to start right here where we first walk in this is our compost heap mostly just cut grass right now this is our broccoli patch the broccoli was over here we only got tiny bits of broccoli. It just got too hot, too fast. So we pulled that out. The cauliflower is not, I'm sorry about my shadow. Cauliflower is not putting anything on. I'm pretty sure it's too hot for cauliflower. We're gonna pull all the cauliflower out. We're gonna make room to plant more corn. The cabbage actually is doing very well. Let me get over here so I'm not in the, my shadow's not in the shot cabbage it's dirty because eddie was up here mowing and kicking dust around but they have made some really good heads we already pulled one head off and ate that and i am very happy with the cabbage this is the first time in my life i've ever grown cabbage because number one eddie doesn't like cabbage now i love cabbage i like to just boil it down put some butter on it and i love it but eddie doesn't like cabbage so i've never grown it before but I wanted cabbage, so I grew cabbage. Okay, here, right next to the cabbage is our first, uh, first planting of corn this year. The only planting we've done so far, but it is only May 27th. We just harvested a bunch of corn, which I set in the kitchen and I will show that to you right here. This is all the corn that we picked. This morning, it's a lot more corn than we got last year, but some of it didn't pollinate fully. So you can see this one's like only half full. The top of it didn't pollinate, but better than we did last year. And I'm really happy with the corn. I was afraid it wasn't gonna get enough sunshine. In the afternoon, the sun goes behind these trees here so this is in the shade but it looks so much better than it did last year it's tall it's green it looks fabulous so um a lot of the ears didn't get very big though 
Like, if you can see this, this is just itty bitty, and we already pulled one off of this plant. I think it was this plant. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never grown corn before. So, well, we did last year, but it didn't grow. But as you can see, the silks are dead, but the corn, some of it just doesn't feel ready. Okay, so that's the corn, and I'm really, really happy with it. Even just getting a couple of ears of corn was great because last year we grew corn and it didn't produce, it didn't do well at all. We had it in one of the raised beds and it just didn't work out. But this year, it worked out fabulous. These are the grapes that I just planted. They haven't done anything yet. And then if we spin over here, you can see this fabulous garden with all the food. Here's the pumpkin patch. These ones on this side are the giant Atlantic pumpkins. And I've got a couple that are pretty big. There's this one here. It's pretty big. And there's one in here that's even bigger. Right here. That's a really big pumpkin. But as you can see, some of my vines are dying. Uh, I'm pretty sure I probably have some vine borers in there. Not really sure how to take care of those. I was going to spray some BT on here, but I don't know if that works on vine borers. But the sugar pie pumpkins are in the back, which <laughs> I don't know what happened, guys, but... These don't look like sugar pie pumpkins because some of them are pretty big. Now, I grew sugar pie pumpkins last year and they were of a size that you would expect. And now this year, we're getting some pretty big ones. Here's one that's... This doesn't look like a sugar pie pumpkin to me. This is, you know, a pretty big pumpkin here. So... But there are a bunch in there. The pumpkins are looking a lot better than they did last year. They're much more green. They seem to be living a little bit longer. I did plant earlier this year, I think. So there's the pumpkin patch. Over here, we have pepper plants. These are my favorites. These are the lunchbox peppers. And they're my favorites because, oops. Well, these are my favorites because they get this size. They're perfect for throwing into your lunchbox and just having a snack. So, really good. Now, I did lose a lot of pepper plants to the late frost that we had. And I tried to restart seedlings twice and it didn't work out. These are all peppers. These are giant Marconis here that I bought from the store because I lost so many of them to that frost. I had to replace them with something. And these are all peppers. Still peppers. And these are the Mariposa carrots that are supposed to get really long and I pulled one up yesterday, but wasn't that long yet. I don't know if they're going to get really long or not. Here, I'm really happy with this crop, but I don't think it was enough. These are pinto beans, and there are a ton of beans on there. But I don't think it's going to be anywhere near enough. Maybe for a couple pots of chili. And here is our asparagus. Now, I did grow this with the pinto beans this year because the asparagus was really small and i figured you know there'd be plenty of room this year to plant something in with it next year i will not plant anything with the asparagus we're going to let this bed go wild with just asparagus this is two-year-old asparagus it was in the ground and growing last year you see we're getting some some uh Spears in here, but they're kind of small. We've got lots of asparagus here. And it's doing really, really, really well. 
So I'm happy with that. My screen is dirty. Okay. Next up is the potatoes. These are ready to be picked. I really need to harvest the potatoes and every time the soil is dry because I, I water with my drip system and well, I keep watering them. But every time they're dry, I tell myself, I need to harvest the potatoes. I want to do a comp comparison video between the three different kinds of potatoes that we have. We have Yukon Golds, we have I, what I believe is red Pontiac. They're red potatoes that we pick up at the feed store. And then we have these, which are Kennebecs. And I want to do a comparison video on which ones grow better here, how they did, whatever. But I keep watering them and I don't want to pull them up while they're wet. So hopefully I watered yesterday, or I, th I think I watered the day before yesterday and it's 95 degrees here. So it's not going to take long for them to dry up, but once they do dry up, I'm going to harvest all of these potatoes and see which ones did better here. So we know what we want to plant next year or even try some different, some different varieties next year. This here is my miracle bed. <laughs> These are our strawberries. We've got some beautiful strawberries on there. This is what I harvested out of the strawberry bed this morning. Whoops. And there's some pretty good sized strawberries in there. Okay, so the reason this is my miracle bread bed, I, I was so ready to tear it up. The strawberries have always done really well. And I was coming up and I was getting a handful of big strawberries every morning. Well, then suddenly something started eating the berries. So Eddie built this cover that we closed up at night because we thought maybe it was birds or rabbits getting in there eating the strawberries. But they were still getting eaten, even with the chicken wire cover on there. So I did some research and I found out I could put mothballs in there. So I put mothballs in here and you can actually still see them here and you can smell them. I put mothballs all around in here in the whole bed and I was like okay that'll deter whatever's eating them still didn't work they were walking right over the mothballs to eat my strawberries and I was so upset because I love strawberries so come to find out it was mice eating strawberry eating the strawberries so we thought well the only way we can stop it now is put hardware cloth on top so that they can't fit through the wire well, I'll tell you what worked. <laughs> and it didn't have anything to do with the bed. So here's the bed and here's the farm field. Now outside of this fence right here is not our property. And that was all grown up really high, like to the top of the fence. So Eddie went out there with the mower and he mowed all of that down, right down the fence line. He, he, he mowed that whole thing all the way down. And that worked. As he was mowing it, he could see all these mice running away. The day after he mowed it, there wasn't any more damage to the strawberries. They were just living right there in the tall grass, coming in, getting a free meal. So we got rid of the grass and now we get strawberries. So I'm really happy about that because I was so frustrated. I wanted my strawberries and I, I couldn't get any of them. They were eating them when they were ripe. They were eating them when they weren't ripe. I couldn't get one strawberry out of there. Okay, so moving on. Here is our kale and lettuce, but the lettuce is going by. We need to pull that out. Got some marigolds everywhere. These are the peas. Now I was sitting here harvesting peas when I decided I better do a garden tour because as you can see, my peas are getting a little crispy. I think it's definitely too hot for peas, but we get a little bit. I didn't plant very many peas this year, but we do get a little bit every couple of days. And it's enough that I can throw some fresh peas into stir fries and whatever. Eddie doesn't like peas. Ocean likes fresh peas, but he's not wild about any kind of peas. So 
I planted enough to just get some into their diet. I mean, they they may not like them, but they eat what I give them. So it's enough peas to get some into their diet, and you know that's all you can ask. Got to eat a little bit of peas. So let me finish picking these peas right quick. That's the end of the row right there. So I just want to get these out of here and then we can move on. Like I said, it's like 95 degrees out here already today and it's only nine o'clock. So these are the onions that I planted that were the wrong type. I've been pulling them out and dehydrating them for onion powder and it actually works out really well. And here's the beginning of our trellis. I'm really happy with this trellis. As you can see, the cucumbers are going up and they're growing like crazy. Look at these cucumbers. I can't even keep up with them. I, I could pick 20 cucumbers every single day. There's a big, big one down there. So we have the two different kinds of cucumbers. That's why some of them look like this. These are the, I don't know. We have market more in here and we have Wisconsin. Look at this one. I love this. I love that they're just hanging, which is what I envisioned for this garden. And so many big ones. I have been giving them away to the neighbors. I just can't give enough of them away. Look at this massive cucumber right here. If I can get it off the vine. Put the vine back up. Look at this massive cucumber. And even though they're getting this big, they're not getting bitter. So that's a plus. Cucumbers down the middle. These are the green beans on the outside of the cucumbers. There's jade beans, mixed beans, and then we have top crop beans over there. Spin around here. Now we went down that row there. Here we have some zucchini, which we've actually never eaten. I've been shredding big zucchini and putting it in the freezer so I can make zucchini bread. Our garlic. Now I did harvest. I'm in the shadow. I'm in my shadow again. I did harvest this garlic. This was music garlic and I have got it hanging in the kitchen to dry. And look at this mess, holy cow. So these are the tomatoes going up the cattle panel, tre trellises. And these are Mexican midgets. They're turning orange another day or two and we will have some ripe ones. There's just a few, there's not too many that are orange yet, but look at that, beautiful tomatoes. Now, let me set these down. On the tomatoes, I planted a lot of different varieties of tomatoes. Well, not a lot, but a few different ones. And one of those that I planted was Rutgers, which was supposed to be a determinant tomato. It's an heirloom. Most of these are hybrids because I want them to vine up over. And I was told that the Rutgers were a determinant variety, which means they'll get about three feet tall, stop growing, put all their tomatoes on, they'd all ripen at the same time. And these are the Rutgers. They, I didn't prune them. I didn't prune the suckers off because they were supposed to be determinants and I thought they would stop growing like way down in here about waist height. But as you can see, they've gotten a lot taller than that. So I did come through and I pruned off a bunch because they were so big. They were falling down into the row like this one here. It's leaning out and I don't have enough cattle panel space over here to stand it up and tie it up. I guess I put too many in there. But so as you can see, I'd love to know your experience with Rutgers tomato. If they actually do keep going or if they stop at some point. Now the tomatoes on this side are 
Uh, these are my Chadwick cherries. Now these will go all the way around this trellis if I can keep them healthy. So far this year, I'm really happy. We haven't had any bug problems, no disease problems. Here you can see I'm losing my walkway to tomatoes. These are going crazy. These are my spare tomatoes. So I don't know what kind any of them are. So I did not prune. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. I might take some type of rope and bring it around the tomatoes and tie it there and tighten it up to try to stand those up. These are also spare tomatoes. So they're just a mix of every kind that I started. I did prune that side up. That's why those are standing up. All right, over here we have some store-bought peppers. We've got some giant um, jalapenos. I don't like jalapenos, but Eddie loves them. So we've got some giant jalapenos there. And we've got some sweet banana peppers here. Those are getting massive. That plant is totally full. This plant is totally full. There's probably 20 peppers on there. So I'm really happy with the garden this year. It's doing so much better than last year. We still have chard from last year's planting and we're still eating it. It is still good. It's not bitter. We've got a grasshopper on there. But all of this is charred from last year. I mean, it's starting to get a little tall and bolt, which is fine because that's last year's crop and I still have this year's crop down the other end. So I'm not too worried if we lose that. This is a big garden, guys. I'm sorry if this video ends up really long. I'm trying to speed through it and just show you what I've got growing. I would love to sit down and talk to you and harvest what I need to harvest because it's gonna get really hot out here. It already is, I'm already sweating. But it's just a big garden to try to get through all of it. These are the top crop beans here. As you can see, they kind of went crazy. This, it's all bushed out right here. And these are all top crops. And I get, I get four to five quarts between all three varieties of green bean that I planted, I get four to five quarts every two days. So that's what I've been canning up for green beans is four to five quarts every other day. Sometimes uh, when I'm busy, I won't harvest until two days later. And that's usually when I'll get the five quarts. These here are the Beauregard sweet potatoes that I purchased. They seem to be doing okay. I still have sweet potatoes that I bought from the um, grocery store. I bought a sweet potato from the grocery store, put it in some water to root, and I still have to get those in the ground. I just need to find an empty bed. I don't wanna put them where I'm gonna pull the potatoes up, but I may put them where I pull the onions up from. Okay, these here are some golden honeydew melons. And I was kind of surprised that these have done as well as they are. They're also covered in dirt from Eddie mowing. But I didn't have much dirt in this bed. The place where we buy our mushroom compost ran out. I guess we bought them out. And so this bed didn't get as much. And neither did this bed. And this bed, as you can see, is totally filled up and these are rocky ford cantaloupe now we are actually ed or eddie is actually from rocky ford colorado area so we kind of like those cantaloupes kind of used to them and if i remember correctly there's one right down here looking good there's also one in here a smaller one in there but we all love cantaloupe and honeydew so i'm happy they're doing so far they're doing as well as they are i don't like to count my chickens before they hatch but so far this year everything is looking fabulous well almost everything i'll show you one thing that i don't think is going to do very well these 
are not one of them. These are our Charleston Gray watermelons. That's a pretty big melon already for this time of year. Here's another one. This is, I mean, it, it's a good 12 inches long and it's pretty heavy. So I'm excited to get watermelons this year. I, I'm really hoping they survive and they make it all the way to maturity. There's another one in here. Everybody loves watermelon, right? I actually have two different types of watermelon in here. You can see all the yellowing vines. The, this is, all the ones that are yellow are a different, a different variety. I don't know why they're yellow. They've got plenty of water. I fertilized the beds when I planted, but the yellow vines are these little um, midget watermelons. So the way it's going this year, I don't think I'm going to replant those because, as you can see, they pretty much look like they're dying. And they've been yellowing pre since pretty early on. The Charleston Grays are doing good. They're nice and green. They're vining really well. But the other ones are just, they're totally turning yellow. And I have no idea why one watermelon variety would turn yellow while the other one is thriving. Okay, the last bed is the one that I don't think is doing very well. Actually, I know it's not doing very well because I have some of these plants growing volunteer where the pig pen was last year. And these don't look anything like them. These are my acorn squash. If I can get out of my shadow. As you can see, they're not very big. They're about the size of a baseball. The leaves are not very big. The ones that I have growing in the pig pen from last year, the leaves are probably eight times that size. They're massive. So I think, again, I'm still not gonna get any acorn squash. I don't know what it is about me and acorn squash, but I can't seem to get any. <laughs> Man, guys, it's hot out here. Our blueberries are doing good. I didn't prune them last year. I didn't know what I was doing, but we've got a bunch of blueberries here on the top. And actually there's a bunch down here. I keep getting in the way with my shadow. Lots of blueberries. I got the first ripe blueberry yesterday. Just picked it off and popped it in my mouth. And this is the blueberry, blueberry bush that we planted this year. As you can see it's, it's covered in blueberries, but they don't look very good. They, they're, see if I can get a close-up shot here. They are sort of pruney looking. They're like all wrinkled. So I don't know what's going to happen with those blueberries. I don't know if they're just not getting enough water. I do not have a watering system watering the blueberries as of yet. We just finished rerunning all of this water because last year our beds we're going this way instead of this way. So we had to move all of my drip irrigation. We had to replace a lot of it because the rows are a lot longer now instead of just being a 10 foot bed. We have the drip irrigation, <clears throat> I'm sorry. We have the drip irrigation going through four beds with a quarter inch line. So we have our main line coming down from way down there by the pumpkins, the main lines come down along the length of the beds all the way down. And then at the beginning of a group of beds, this is a group of beds, this is four beds. I have my quarter inch drip line that goes down through all of those beds with a shutoff valve on each grouping so I could shut this group of beds off and turn on, say, that one. All right, guys, I've been talking about this garden for about 40 minutes. So if there's anything in, in particular you would like to see or know about the garden, please let me know. Uh, I hope I got through it all and not too quickly, but quickly enough that I can get back to harvesting before I am totally soaked in sweat. It is hot and it is humid. 
and it makes for a miserable day up here in the sunshine. Thanks for coming along with me today and I will see you next time.